The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Good morning, everyone. Basil Chapman here, Tiger Technicians Hour on this Tuesday, the 7th of May, moving along very quickly in this month of May. So in the meantime, we're looking at the Dow uh, up 93 at 38,945. Very nice walking this Chapman wave inside wedge target resistance lines. This little dash line here in this cup formation trying to tackle the left side uh, resistance levels of going into uh, 38,983, 38,000, what's the other one over there? 38,000. Yeah, I, the way I'm looking at it right now at 38,942, how the market, how the Dow uh, treats the 38,990s is going to be really important. If we push into the 39,100s uh, today or tomorrow, that is accelerating this move to the upside and saying that the, the takeoff from the low that was made on the 17th of April at 37,753 in the Dow with the retest a little bit higher than that, forming the lowercase h successful test, meaning that it turned into a cup formation and closed above the arch high. That's the high that was made right here on the 23rd of April at 38,561. There we are, quite a bit higher than that, 300 points. That's really important. Remember, I drew this in here about two, three weeks ago. I said, there's a chance that we're going to have a rally. And then the weekly chart, <clears throat> which still has a very strong nine-period moving average over the 14, could make um, a little failure pattern, that H pattern that we always talk about, the H pattern that I talk about and let me show it to you, looks like this, where the price comes down, rallies, goes to an A or a B, first or second peak, and then the second peak or the first peak, it rolls over, takes out the left side low. Look how successful this one was at that A. That became an A that was almost an A minus. Now it's a B and it's still... Uh, I can change the color uh, at the end of the day. I can change it to blue, suggesting that the Dow going into next week should still be making higher highs uh, in the daily chart. Not all time highs. I'm just saying higher highs. OK, so that's the pattern that we're looking at. Is it going to unfold? Well, the MACD is weak. The stochastic is way down at in the weekly chart at the 36 percent level. On balance volume is strong. The nine period moving average is strong. You've got mixed indicators, but the most important is my indicator of last resort, and that is the 914. Uh, I'll, I'll go through this right now since I mentioned it. Let me just show you something. I'll go right here. Okay. So look, here is the, all right, the, the one I'm looking at right now is the IWM, the Russell 2000. Look how it's gone green. When that nine period moving average goes green, that's where you want to see follow through to the upside. And it can stay green, as you can see, it stayed green for a long time. Look at the Dow. The Dow stayed green from November the from November the 3rd, right there, all the way to the 23rd, was it? To the 3rd of April. To the 3rd of April. And now it's got it's been pink and the last two days went back to green. But this pattern, when you pull back sharply, this is the one that really is, you have to monitor it very closely because this is the one that has the potential to fail. So let me show you, so I call it the indicator of last resort. And if we're going back to our charts that we were looking at a moment ago, here we go. <clears throat> you can see, turn green, but that nine period moving average hasn't yet turned pink. Since that uh, November the 3rd acceleration from that low in October, uh, it was October that the low was made, November the 3rd was when the nine period crossed positive. That weekly chart has not turned negative at all. And that's really uh, very important. Now let's look at the S&P just doing the same thing because a lot of people ask me, could you look at the short term as well as the intermediate term? My intermediate term charts are still very strong. Even this S&P, which had the potential to make an arch formation in the daily, has re really, I, I can't say it's negated that, but there's a chance that that is not going to be as important um, as it would have been 
if there was a failure over the last two days. In fact, it's making higher high for leg C. Look at that. The MACD is good. Stochastics at 78%, close to 80%. On balance volume is still quite weak. That's the blue line. Look at the relative strength. It's getting stronger and stronger. That's good. Look at the nine period moving average. To me, and I had a question, where do I think if there is a pullback, do I think that the S&P, will it retest the low that was made uh, just uh, a week and a half ago, two weeks ago at 49.53? Mm. I think that this low right here is the one that I'd be looking at. And that's the low of the 2nd of May at 5,011. Here we are at 51.88. Even there, I have to go one step at a time. Um, and look, 9 period moving average is still very strong in the weekly chart, monthly chart as well. QQQ, here we go. QQQ is up 23 cents at 440.48. Uh, right in the uh, inside track repellent zone, these two lines here, a little narrow mini channel. It's amazing. When I developed this technique, I thought, gosh, it is so visually, I love visually easy things. I'm, I'm a visual person. So I look at that. Yeah, the math is, is important. I actually, it's more arithmetic than math. I don't know if I get uh, as far as math. <laughs> Let's just say that in terms of this, Look, you've got almost a one-to-one, -one, just using simple techniques. Look, let's go from the low that was made in the QQQ right here at about 4, 4.12ish or so. And just do a um, – so in this falling axe formation, this is the pattern that we look at. This is this pattern right here where it goes up and there's all of a sudden starts to make lower highs and much lower lows. Then it forms a cup formation, tries to break that resistance line. If it does, it can go one-to-one -to, -one to the upside. If that's the case – Let's see if that's the case right here. So I'm always very, very cautious in doing this. The way I learned to do it for my own technique is to then find the lowest trough of importance. Well, it's almost there. If that breaks to the upside sharply and this becomes support, then I can go to the next level of support for the one-to-one. -one. Usually I just take the moving average and I go, that takes you almost, takes you above the 449.34 uh, high of the 21st of uh, March. So I, I don't do that. I like to go one step at a time. So the one step at a time says you've got a little bit more to go uh, towards the 441.34. We're at 441.29 right now. All right. And the weekly chart also improved in the QQQs. Uh, look at the IWM. And this is the most important thing for me at this particular stage. Are we going to see money flow into the small caps as the Microsofts and, and the, 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 the real, the, 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 the mega trend seven, those really massive leaders, that's uh, Meta and uh, Microsoft and Apple and Amazon, et cetera. Uh, if they start to store here, if stocks like NVIDIA, I'll go to that in a moment. I was asked about it. I'll get to it. If they start to stall as they take a breather, money is going to try to find a home. If finally you've got the TLT moving higher, and it's actually very nice today, it's up 75 cents at 90.94. In leg C, this is actually because the stochastic is at 81%. MACD is good. Rental strength is improving. This is actually a buy signal that could turn into a buy mode. And look what it did. It held I was talking about this a week ago. I remember uh, when I was interviewed by Tom, I said, look, Tom, this is a technique that I have, this inside track propellant zone. Let's just see if the TLT, the iShares 20 year Treasury Bond ETF, is able to use this as a springboard. And so far, I can say it looks like it is doing it. The technicals in the weekly chart are still very, very weak. But the daily chart has really improved a lot. And that's getting important. Why don't I put them together? Well, what if you've suddenly... You, oh, I didn't mean to do that. Suddenly you've got the Russell 2000, which has lagged horribly, start to move higher. And you've got bond yields coming down a little bit. All of a sudden you've got money can start to flow back into certain sectors that were not working before. Guys up 100, I'll be right back. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. 
Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Tiger Technician's Hour is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. We're looking at gold, which is down just a fraction at 2,330. I just wanted to show you, look, the nine period moving average finally after had a spectacular turnaround back in February. It went from pink to green, and that was down to the 2,050 level. And it ran all the way to 2,450. I mean, that's, that's a big, big move. Now it's digesting those gains with lower lows and lower highs. But that pink nine period moving average is getting really close to at least attempting to go green. So I'm watching this very closely. And if you look at silver, a little bit of a different chart. Sometimes they match, sometimes they don't. In a sense, it matches for the daily. But that weekly chart, that straight down move, uh, is suggesting that um, it's forming a base in the 26, 2630 area. It's trading at 2767, up 0.06. I could draw a trend line in right now because they're making lower lows and lower highs. So that trend line would be like that and would take out that um, the last two sessions. And you can do it this way right here. So it's almost, a, it's not really a channel. To make it a channel, I'd have to go like this. I'd have to lift that up. Either I'm taking the 
lower one and moving it. Okay, I'll do it like that. I just wanted to show you that uh, lower lows and lower highs in proportion within this channel. And that just says to me that silver is digesting those big gains. It made a peak D and Chapman made peak Ds where you monitor it closely to see what happens next because it could recycle very sharply high or that's where it takes the biggest rest period. And that's what it's done. So it's not a big deal. It's just digesting gains. If you look at this just visually, you can see it's kind of a in, in the just over 50% range of, of the pullback from the low of late March to the high of April. Not a big deal. Let's just do this. Look at the GDX. The GDX is trading <clears throat> within this Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone. And my, my impression of this whole thing has been that it's gold more than the gold miners. I love to see the gold miners lead gold. I, I don't know why, but over the decades that I've followed it, it just seems to me that when the gold miners move, they move. That's real. That's I mean, that's viable. That's something that you can, I can't say you can touch, but that's that means that they're making money, that there's a turnover. This just says to me, gold has gone up, so mm, therefore the miners should go up a little bit, but it's not mean, it doesn't mean, this is my interpretation, that it's not leading. I like to see it leading. But the way I'm looking at it, the GDX is seems to me in the monthly chart to be building up energy. Let me just take that 120 minute away. Building up energy with the MACD improving. The stochastic has a lot of room to go to 47, at 47% to get to 80%. Uh, that just tells me that if by, say, September ish, September, October, if the um, forget about gold, because gold would have to go quite a bit higher. But if the GDX is trading at 3680 to 3750, closer to 38, that would just say to me, finally, there's a huge turn in the high highs and higher lows, meaning instead of lower highs and lower lows, now you're getting higher highs and higher lows. That's going to be a big thing for the monthly chart of the gold miners, the GDX. SLV, uh, SLV right now is trading, here we go, is trading down, oh, it's unchanged. At 2507, it's just kind of stuck in this range. And not, nothing bad. Look, the pink nine pre moving average is trying to get close to turning green. The MACD histogram, that's the vertical line, sending you the distance between the two moving average is improving. Uh, the uh, uh, relative strength index is a little bit better, but the stochastic is very weak and the on balance volume is very weak. Not so in the weekly chart. The weekly chart is actually quite good. So that's the SLV. Let's go to high grade copper. <clears throat> Question came in, do I think high-grade copper is topping a little bit? And the answer is, Joe, I think that there's been a very big move, but it's, look how steady it is. Higher highs, higher lows, walking the nine-period moving average. Finally, you got down to the 14-period. You're back over the nine-period moving average. I think high-grade copper is digesting huge gains. Look at SCCO. Um, this is really the, the breakout in the monthly chart. Look at that break to the upside. A peak D in the uh, daily, if there's no in the weekly chart, if there's no new high this week, and a peak E with a 121 round number high. Oh, those are round numbers. I'm going to show you something interesting in a moment. Round number high um, back uh, late late April, and it's still holding very well. And my suspicion is we're going to just meander around here for a little bit. And F FCX would be one to look at. That's Freeport McMurrin. Freeport McMoran, FCX. Go on, give it to me. Uh, R, let's just do that. Yeah, trading at up 16 cents. Yeah, it looks the same. Uh, just meandering within this beautiful uptrend. It's a high level consolidation, having a leg D, maybe a peak D weekly, a leg D monthly, Freeport McMoran. All, was that an all time high? You never know with these things because they have cycles over the years. Yeah, I think it is. No, no, I think it's not. Yes, yes, I think it is. Let's see, the high that was a double top high that was made at 61.43 back in May of 2008. I would say that was um, a little while ago, right? Uh, we're at, uh, so that's that's uh, so that's 16 years ago. 61.43, then it pulls back all the way to the, oh, it goes to the single digits and then comes back to 59.66 within a 
couple of dollars of that all-time high, and then it plunges down to this low right here. Can you believe Freeport McMurray was once at $3.45? Double bottoms right here at uh, $4.75. That was in uh, March of 2020. So, yeah, so this is a very good move. It's under the all-time high. I think it will get to the all-time high. It's moving nicely. The monthly chart, it just needs a bit of a breather. That's really what I wanted to say. Question, question, I have to do this. Where, what, what was it now? Oh, my God. Oh, ARM. ARM, I think they come out with earnings in the next day or two. I was going to take a little bit of a gamble for subscribers and say, hey, you know, this has been smacked. From the round number all-time high, if I can find it right here, all-time high of 164.00 on the 12th of February, it's come all the way down to 85.61 with a round number low. Uh, so what was the round number? I think it was a close. Oh, it opened at a round number 100 on the 19th of uh, April. Had a low of 85.61, and now it's at 108 in Lake C. Hmm, we're going to see what happens with arm holdings when they come out with earnings. I'll be right back. Basel Chapman Tiger Conditions out. And we've got a lot to look at. I'll be back and we'll just run through charts when I reach out. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom Daly as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi folks, let me just finish this off here. Okay, so uh, we're looking at, um, I had a question about IBRX. Let me get to some of the questions I had right now. 
<laughs> oh, we've got a caller. I have to go to the caller first. We've got Mark in Fort Collins. Mark, how are you? Do we have Mark on the line? Are you a little fuzzy there? Just sorry. Hi, Mark. Hello, how are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Now? Can you hear me better now? now? I can hear you Not perfectly. Better. Good. You'd okay. like to look Good. at? MSOS. That's Advisor Shares Pure U.S. Cannabis. Yes. So I bought it at 860 before that big pop it had. Um, I did not get out of any. I'm still holding. So I'm in, I have a little profit going, but wonder what your thoughts are. Okay. So now, now you have, um, I would like to call it a good problem. Um, yeah. but it would have been a beautiful trade if yeah. you, you had realized that it was just a news event. But this is what we need for the whole cannabis sector. Look, the MJ also had a big spike up and is now pulling back. It's trying to find some support here at 420 when MJ is the alternate harvest ETF cannabis sector. But this is the um, MSOS, which is the symbol for the advisor shares, pure U.S. It's just this is U.S. cannabis, and I am suspecting that I, the big test came on this pop, the last pop to the upside, in the sense that I wanted to see whether or or not one really needs to be specific in getting the U.S. or just the very broad sector, because at some point you you remember we spoke about this. Oh, I've been talking about this and for months and months saying. It's no good getting a one-off news event. You've got to have the political uh, wherewithal. You've got to have people, not people. You've got to have politicians. Who are people? But there are politicians talking about this. Why? <laughs> because there has to be a sense that there's continuity, there's follow-through, there's, there's a, a building up of not just anticipation, but the expectation that something concrete is going to be done. But i tell you what I've been looking at, which is very interesting, is uh, in the sector itself, it appears to me from what I read that there are m multiple issues involved. And one of it is some of these uh, towns and cities, from what I've heard and from what I've seen, have multiple venues within a mile of one another. And I think that's uh, for, okay, you can call it cannibalizing the cannabis, but that's creating its own problem. So I, I, I'm looking at this and I'm thinking <clears throat> the best is to have it in, like, you, you've bought it, you've got it at a <clears throat> pretty good price. My, my suspicion, and I said this before, is that if you buy it in the, in the single digits, this is both the MJ and the advisor shares, that at some point in 2024, and it's going to, I'm almost sure that, uh, I, I can't be 100% sure, but my bias is to think that it needs political wherewithal. It isn't just technical uh, banking. It's not, it's to do with many other things that to get the push, you need to get the follow through. So my suspicion has been that if you buy this, not as a trade, as a position that you are prepared to hold because at this price, right now it's at 9.36. Um, it had hit the 11s. It was down to the 7s and the 8s. I suspect that at some point you'll have an opportunity to get out of the profit or to add to it because this is like a huge basing uh, for this particular ETF ca uh, sector. So I don't really know what to say to you because I don't know when the next politician is going to say something, but this is a political year and you're going to hear something, I'm sure about it, and that's going to help the stock. But the sustainability is what you and I are talking about, and that's something right. else. Now, what's really fascinating to me is using just this one technique, uh, the technique of the 914, the 9 period over the 14 period moving average. Look at this. Since the uh, MSOS crossed positive, this is now a weekly chart, back on the week of September the 8th, and it was at 7.94.
that nine period moving average has not, it's not even close right now to turning pink. And it's held you in that position. And that's really what I'm saying to you. So if you're, why don't you do it two ways? Why don't you, if you have enough, why don't you keep a core position and say, you know what? I, maybe two points, I'll give it two points down to the sixes and then I'll have to rethink it. But you have a position that you treat as a trading position. And that trading position, maybe at this particular point, that trading position can have a tighter stop. But you really, I think you have to be in this because the moves are so quick. And the next move that happens, I suspect, is not going to pull back as sharply. It's going to make, start to make higher highs and higher lows. So, you know, so I don't know if you want to do this, but I'm suggesting that some part of it is like a core holding based okay. on, look, this month. We haven't finished the month. We've only just begun it. But this is the first month. Um, ever in the MSOS that the nine period in the monthly chart has turned green. Now, the month has yeah. even, it's barely begun. But if it ends the month that way, that's a really positive. And that just says it's starting to build momentum. And uh, wow, it's a real, really tough thing because I don't have a calendar and I don't have a, a crystal ball. I can't say, yeah. to, oh, let's say on May the 14th at 12.30, a senator, whatever, is going to say, oh, cannabis sector. <laughs> I just don't know when yeah. it's going to happen. I think it will happen. So if you can treat one as a trading position and your eight, okay. I'd say don't take a loss on your trading position okay. and, and have a trading stop. And even the trading position you could add if it starts to get to 10.15, you could even add a little bit, but keep your call. And, that, and I would use it as a trading position. Keep taking, whittling money off, and you built up a kitty to say, you know what, I've now got enough that I can risk a little bit more on the next big pop-up. That's just the best way. I don't know how else to do it because you can okay. see by the cycle, it almost looks like a biotech stock in the weekly chart, yeah. the way it pops up and then fails. So I don't know if that you helps see, you. Do you see any time price match on the monthly chart with that? Big bar, I think, goes up. To yes, I do. I, I do see it. But, I, you know, I like to say let's go all the way to the Grand Canyon Cliff, and that would take me to the month of May of 2022. That's two years ago. And then I'd use okay. this little doji candle right here. And that takes me to about all of everything's pointing to kind of the fall, somewhere around September that it could start to really move into this candle and that would take you to the 14th. Whew, that sounds like a lot, doesn't it? Yeah, 14.50 was the high in December of 2022. Good eye. That's the way I'd be okay. thinking of it. I hope that helps you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you for calling, Mark. Always appreciate it. Uh, folks, Dow's up 104, SP's up 8, working hard. I'll be back in a moment. Tigers, you've seen his show, you've learned from his webinars, and now it's time to trade side by side with him. Join Larry Pesavento for the second month of his new service, Live Trading Fridays. Hosted in the Tigers Den trading room on Discord, Larry has analyzed a number of commodities and indices, placed profitable trades, and explained his method. Whether you're new to trading or are a seasoned market veteran, trading side by side with a titan like Larry Pesavento will only enhance your game. Utilizing Fibonacci retracements and ABCD structures, Larry provides decades of insight into when to place trades, when to exit, when to ignore, and so much more. Learning is doing. So if you're serious about learning technical analysis and becoming profitable in this uncertain market, Live Trading Fridays is a must-have tool in your arsenal. Live Trading Fridays occur every second and fourth Friday of the month, so trading events for this month are May 10th and 24th. If you're serious about trading, we'll see you there. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. 
Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk. So why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. So I had a question here about, I uh, remember we were talking, look at, looking at Palantir, and I said, I really don't quite understand. It becomes a very popular stock, and then it just disappears, and then it gets... And it had a very nice spike to the upside yesterday above the first uh, left side, right side, this cup formation. And the high that it was trying to tackle was the high of April, of March. No, it was, yes, March the 27th at 20. It opened at round number 25, went to 25.48. And the next thing you know, a week and a half later, it's down at 20. I would say a, you know, a five point to decline almost 18 to almost 20 percent is something serious. But then what does it do? It comes all the way back to that 25.48 level. Yesterday, it goes to what? 25.36. And uh, it was holding very well. And we discussed that there was earnings. And I said, I just... I have no idea. For a long time, I've just done nothing when it's been earnings. When we have positions in our portfolio, if the stock's done well, I don't even mention the most of the time. I, I don't even mention the earnings because uh, if it takes a bit of a hit, you, usually we've got enough comfort that you know we, we can survive it, and then we decide what to do. The other thing is, if it does very well, that's just a bonus. I don't want to get carried away, but sometimes when you're real tight and we've got we're in a position and it's very close, you just don't know what's going to happen. In this case, I just stepped aside. It's been on my list as something to watch for a long time, only because people talk about it. Uh, Palantir is, there it goes. Palantir is, te Palantir Technologies is, um, uh, it develops data fusion platforms, had a 45 round number high uh, three months after its IPO in the, in the 10 area. Uh, that was in January of 2021, plummets down to 5.27. Uh, end of 22, beginning of 2023. And it's had a very nice run up to the 28 level. And now it's pulling back. And today, what does it do? Comes out with earnings last night, I believe. Um, at first, I thought I read that there were some favorable things. And all of a sudden, it's down 14%, down 3.63 at 21.57. And that's why I gave up a long time ago, especially in options. Because in options, you can look fantastic. Let's just imagine. I don't know if it did happen. I, I wasn't able to see it. But if Palantir, after the, now, after the earnings announcement, spikes from 25, 36, uh, where the, just about, where the, call it 25, spikes to 26, 50, then 28, but then all of a sudden when the market opens, by then everything's been digested. They've, uh, they've done their, uh, their call and everything. And bam, it goes down. That's the thing. So your options would look fantastic like now. You're busy patting yourself on the back. You know my expression where you take your hands off the wheel to pat yourself on the back. That's when you hit the tree. Um, or in this particular instance, that's when it gaps down, leaves an iron reversal. 
And the question is, what do I think is going to happen now? I, it's not today's action. So far, it looks like the Chapman Wave inverted re red Roman candle. Not the point. The point is, today's Tuesday. By Friday's close, if it's even able just to, for an eye blink, if it can get to 2270 between now and Friday, in other words, it can get back to today's, so far today's high, not the open. The open was down at 21.99. Uh, and it's trading at 21.57. But the high of the day, there must have been an open, then it tried to rally, then it plunged, and now it's kind of stuck in the low range. But if it's able to test that, and then the following, either t t tomorrow or the next day, and then the following session, it's able to get anywhere into the 20, oh, 22.30s, that's, no, sorry, 23.20s, if it's able to do that, it says, okay, now I'm going to spend my time just repairing the damage. Something's happened that is not conducive to upward movement because this is a huge pullback, 25 down to 21, 35 so far as the low of the day. I mean, that's that's a big hit. So, And the weekly chart, it's a weekly chart. Let's wait until Friday. So all I'm saying is that I don't like this kind of action. I don't like the action now. Uh an hour and a little bit into the trading day because at this point, the buyers should have come in to say, hey, this is a buying opportunity. I don't see that right now. I'd, I'd be really careful. And if you're in it and you still have a profit, then I would, I would make sure that that profit is held. I would not take a loss under any condition because you had a really good profit before. I'd rather contemplate re-entering on an, an analysis a really objective analysis in a couple of days. So I would put a stop. Today's low is 21.35. If it starts to trade under 21, 21.18 actually, but I'll, I'll be a little flexible, say 21. I don't want anything to do with the stock. I'd rather be buying higher highs and higher lows after this tumultuous day. Um, so I'm sorry to say that because that, that the gap down it was just instantaneous. The fact that it's got a high up at 22.70 and the low is 21.35 and it's trading now close to the low, that's just not a good sign. But the technicals are actually not that bad. The green, it's still green nine period. That's why I'm saying to you, you've got to give it a day or two, but I would have a stop on a good part of my position, just a little bit pro probably under today's low. I just I wouldn't be taking the risk. This could have a, third, a second gap down. It, this is not. There's a response that's very unfavorable. Talking about a response, I'll get I'll get to IBKR in a moment. But I had a question about SIM, which is SIM, symbolic, uh, end-to-end AI, robotic warehouse automation systems. We had had this for ages in the 21 area. It screams up into the 64. We took nice profits. We got a core position, but. I don't, we, we keep wanting to get it, and I keep reading over and over, even just the other day, I read, uh, insider sales are still very heavy. Then I'm looking, yesterday I suddenly see, uh, after the close, after the close, it's up $5. I thought, oh, is there an earnings report that I forgot about? Well, there was. Um, and it's just, what well, I forgot about it, because I might have been influenced and said, mm, maybe I'm supposed to do something. Um, and try again to go to the long side. I'm just, a, I don't, this is in the robotic warehouse. Surely this is a, a desirous area to be in. And look, it's gone almost for, how long is that? Is that, a, it's almost a year. Unbelievable. So July of 2023, it hits 64.14. And it spent all this time just going in a sideways triangle, narrower and narrower and narrower. And I see inside, inside of buying, I should see, not inside of selling. And I'm talking about it because there are 10,000 shares at a time being sold. So I don't know what happened. So look what happened. It pops up to 48.08 uh, this morning. The last high was back in uh, March, and it hit 50.41, uh, 50 March the 25th. And look where it is now. It's given back a huge chunk of the gains. But I actually like what it's doing at this point. But it's actually holding quite well. But it's given back a chunk of the gains. And that weekly chart's got the Chapman Wave inside, a, um, sorry, inside track propellant zone, which worked for a moment. And now 
We'll see how it's going to be tested. So I want to just talk about that because there was a, there were two other stocks that I want to talk about in terms of earnings. So this is given back. I still think this is, from what I've read, it's still a very good. It used to be what I thought was a great company, but now it's just a good company. But look at this Disney. Disney's down 9.74%. It's down 11 points at 105.19. And guess Tigers, you've seen his show, you've learned from his webinars, and now it's time to trade side by side with him. Join Larry Pesavento for the second month of his new service, Live Trading Fridays. Hosted in the Tigers Den trading room on Discord, Larry has analyzed a number of commodities and indices, placed profitable trades, and explained his method. Whether you're new to trading or are a seasoned market veteran, trading side by side with a titan like Larry Pesavento will only enhance your game. Utilizing Fibonacci retracements and ABCD structures, Larry provides decades of insight into when to place trades, when to exit, when to ignore, and so much more. Learning is doing. So if you're serious about learning technical analysis and becoming profitable in this uncertain market, Live Trading Fridays is a must-have tool in your arsenal. Live Trading Fridays occur every second and fourth Friday of the month, so trading events for this month are May 10th and 24th. If you're serious about trading, we'll see you there. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. I was just checking. Yeah, I still think I have a bit of a problem with some of my email, but uh, I'll try to get that fixed by tomorrow or, or, or Thursday. Okay, so we're looking at IBRX, which is uh, I, uh, Immunity Bio. This is oncology treatments, trading at $8.60, up 79 cents. So look, the recta, up a high level consolidation. I've got this as a peak C. Um, it's, it's, the nine is way over the 14. It's acting very well. MACD is good. Everything's good. It needs a pop, but this, this kind of pattern can last a little while. And all you have to do is got to be really careful that the 745 level is not pierced and closed on the downside near this going to 720. That's going to mean the stalling is going to go a little longer before there's more news. But at this particular point, high level consolidation is a leg up a D in the, in the weekly chart acting very well. So with that said, I'm going to say it's holding very nicely looking out. The idea of of, of 10, uh, 10 to $11 uh, dollars 
that's on the left side going back to 2021. It's going to take a little while unless it's just a sudden approval that comes in. But so far, it's holding very, very well. Uh, cu a couple of things I'll just quickly t uh, uh, touch because I didn't realize we was running out of time. So this is what I'm looking at. The Dow right now <clears throat> is up very nicely. It's up uh, going towards that left side resistance and the Chapman Wave left side, right side price time match, which takes you to next week where I want to see the 39,000. 200s tested. We'll see if that's going to be holding very well. We remain in our long-term long positions. We're looking at um, actually almost all our positions today, except Microsoft's pull back a little bit. Um, but all the other positions are doing very nicely. Just uh, real quickly, uh, I want you to look at the XLF. This is very important. XLF has come back strong today. Leg B and the KRE, which we do not have. I want you to get in. I've been waiting. Um, is holding very nicely. Yes, I think that we're looking at the same relationship of the S&P to the Russell 2000 with the small caps are coming on. I think that the regionals could have a little bit of a rally here, and that's good. So with that said, have a wonderful rest of the day. I'll be back with Tom later on. Thank you.